to use your radio. Uh, however, when we do communications for events like the marathons and the, the 5 and 10K races and stuff like that, we typically get a t-shirt like all the other volunteers who work the event. Okay, maybe they'll give us that water or something. So the t-shirt's not considered monetary uh, compensation. It's just, it's what all the volunteers get. So when we work an event, we're one of the many volunteers and we'll all get the same thing, maybe t-shirt, whatever. I have dozens and dozens and dozens of t-shirts for the marathons and the 10K races and everything else. Uh, there's one down here, what? Super Bowl Sunday, right? It's down here at the, is it, uh, Hermo, uh, no, Redondo. Redondo. And I used to be in charge of the communications for that. So every Super Bowl Sunday in the morning, they do a, what, 10K race? and get a t-shirt for that. <laughs> okay, but an exception to the rule would be if your communications is incidental to classroom instruction in an educational institute, you could get financial compensation. What does that mean? Well, let's just say that Terry's teaching a class, and it's going to be a technical class. It's got nothing to do with amateur, but it's technical. And one of the technical things she talks about is, oh, yeah, they have these radios. Uh, and if you're a ham radio operator, you can talk. Let me show you how it's on. And she talks to her, back and forth to her repeater to someone. Now, technically, she's, she's uh, using the radio to give a class, and she's getting paid to give the class, right? That's an exception to the rule because she's not, someone's not giving her money just to use the radio. She's using money to teach. That's, the, that's one of the exceptions. There's a couple more exceptions. Uh, another exception are the folks who work at the American Radio Relay League. You don't have to memorize that. This organization back in Connecticut represents the amateur radio. They, they represent us to the FCC. <coughs> the FCC wants to change our privileges, the American Radio Relay League there to to help say, wait a minute, wait a minute now, why, why are we doing that? Why are you doing that? So they're our representatives. And of course, it's a, it's a bunch of people, and they get paid to represent us, and they're all amateur radio operators. Okay, okay. so much for that section. Let's see, we'll go to four. Let's see what we get there. Okay, Gordon West calls this minding the rules. Let's see what he says here. Okay, this is pretty straightforward, I think. In decent and obscene languages prohibited in amateur radio service, I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's no list of, you know, prohibited or magic or indecent words. I uh, regretfully you occasionally hear foul language on some of the amateur bands. You can support the FCC or you can tape it, provide the FCC. So on some of the repeater bands, there's always some local jerks that are hams that like to get on and eh, say something that none of us want to hear, okay? If you call the FCC and say, I heard so-and-so say this the other day, it's your word against someone else. So if you ever hear something bad on the radio, the answer is you tape it. You actually tape it. You give that to the FCC. Okay? That's not a question this might. Okay, broadcasting means transmissions intended for reception by general public, either directly or indirectly. So when you're watching television, that's broadcasting. It's one way. They're, they're sending something to you, but you don't transmit something back to them. When you listen to AM radio, FM radio, that's broadcasting. Okay? So here's what I can't do. I cannot get on this radio and say, Hi, this is K1DFO. I think I'll read the Declaration of Independence. And just sit here and read it. Now, it would be nice, but see, that's broadcasting. Because I'm not talking to anybody specifically. I'm just... Da -da 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 okay? I can't get on and sing a song. It's broadcasting. The purpose of amateur radio is to communicate with someone. Okay? So when it's when you're just putting out da -da 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 -da, that's broadcasting. Not allowed. Transmitting information to the general public, which is broadcasting, uh, is not permitted. Okay? However, an amateur station may transmit related transmit signals related to broadcasting when such communication is directly related to the immediate safety of human life or property or protection. Now, what does that mean? Let's say that uh, we have a, a bad earthquake or something, or someone here just is an auto crash, and I jump on a repeater. Now, I'm not talking to anybody, I'm saying, this is K1DFO, I have emergency, I have emergency, I have emergency, is anybody on there can help me? See, I'm not talking to anybody yet. I'm looking for someone to talk to, but technically, since it's just me talking to no one, it's broadcasting. But because it is an emergency, I'm allowed to get on it. Can someone help? Can someone help? This is K1DFO, I'm a, can someone help? Well, as long as no one comes back to me, technically, I'm, it's one-way communication. But if it's an emergency, life-threatening emergency, 
uh, it's considered to be legal. Now, obviously, I would do it on a frequency where I thought maybe somebody might be listening, like a repeater. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Transmitting codes or ciphers by imaginary stations only permitted by the FCC when transmitting any codes to a space station or a radio control airplane. Well, here's what that means. I, I can't get on the radio and, let's say, put a code in to you that's maybe cryptographic. I'm not, not allowed to do that. You see, that hides what I'm doing. But if I'm an amateur radio operator who's, who, who runs a repeater in the space station, I have to control that thing in the sky. So I'm allowed to send it encrypted codes to tell it what to do. Uh, if you've, any, anybody here has probably been down to the Esplanade at Redondo, at the north end of Redondo, there's always these people out there that have these things and they've got these little airplanes that are flying around. Okay? Well, they buy those things and they, the frequency, they're not ham radio frequencies, but they have certain frequencies that the FCC has set aside for them to do that. Well, in the world of amateur radio, there's some frequencies that we can use to do the same thing. That's fine. Well, how does that little airplane know to listen to my little transmitter? Because there's a little code that goes over to it. So I'm allowed to transmit to that little model airplane. Uh, it's one way, it's technically it's broadcasting, and it's got little codes, but it's, it's legal. That application is legal in the world of amateur radio. Okay? Uh, it says, however, hands are occasionally authorized to retransmit uh, transmissions from manned space stations which have music in the background. Yeah, it turned out that uh, the uh, Joint Propulsion Lab, the JPL up in Pasadena, you know, they do a lot of stuff with the space stations, and years and years and years ago, what they wanted to do was, was they were listening to the space station people talking to Houston and all this other stuff, and if you want the right frequencies, you can actually hear it. And they said, gee, that'd be kind of neat. So they got permission from the FCC to, to take that, as they listened to it, and put it on a repeater. Now they would go to a school like this and they say, hey, I'm going to turn on this thing and listen to this repeater. You're going to hear people in the space station talking to Houston, talking to Cape Canaveral. Wow, what a novel idea. So we're just sitting there listening to the space station people talk. Well, in the space station they have music in the background. Well, the FCC said it's okay. As long as it comes from the space station, even though it's on a repeater, that's, a, that's one of the okay situations where music can be in the background. Like I say, for every rule, there's some exceptions. Okay. So as I've noted previously, you know, radio cannot be used for business. So I can't get on here and, and tell somebody, okay, let's see, I'm down here at Hamosa. I'll be at your house in 10 minutes. Now, how did I do that? Well, there's a way to hook a repeater into a telephone. And I can get on a repeater, put in a code, it dials a number, someone answers a phone, and I can be talking to that person through the repeater, believe it or not, and they can come back to me. Well, I can't call them and say, ah, this is Walt from your roofing company, I'll be there in 10 minutes. No, that's a business call. Business can't be done on pretty much radio. Okay? However, it is permitted to tell the hams on the radio that you have something, some uh, ham radio equipment for sale. So every, every week there's a certain frequency where some hams get on and I was like, yeah, I've got this radio for sale. Anybody needs this? Uh, I come 706. Uh, I want uh, 400 bucks for it. Okay, it's K1DFO. Okay, but there's a little group of people that get on and want to have something like that for sale. Now, I can't be a company that sells equipment that's getting on telling you what my company is selling. That's a whole different thing. I could be just a <coughs> ham who has one little item. That's it. Uh, it's extremely rare, but the FCC can ask to inspect your station. Okay, they rarely ever do that. If they do, then uh, you must make your station available for their inspection. That's, this is so rare, don't have to worry about it. They typically do this when uh, somebody has been doing something illegal. Okay. Uh, this might be because uh, harmful interference. So somebody has been doing something that's been causing some interference to somebody and the FCC wants to inspect their station. Okay, that's what that's about. Right? The FCC defines harmful interference as that which seriously degrades, obstructs, or repeatedly interrupts a radio communication service operating in accordance with the regulations. So for instance, there are some people who have uh, nasty habits. And so they, will, they know what frequencies some of the popular repeaters are. Well, they'll just get on that frequency, turn on their transmitter on that frequency, so now the repeater's hearing this, and they'll just turn some music on. 
Well, once that signal goes to the repeater and it stays on, no, none of us can use it, the repeater. They, they've GM the repeater now, okay? So uh, that would be called harmful interference, okay? Uh, okay. Let's keep going. Minding the rules. There's several FCC rules about how much power you can allow to use. Okay, the most power that we can use on most frequencies is 1,500 watts of power, okay? Uh, some frequencies is 200, some frequencies is even less. So there's nothing memorized here, but 1,500 is the maximum. There are several cases where you can only transmit less. Okay, fine. So here we go. <coughs> so the FCC feels that independent of the above, we should always use the minimum power necessary to transmit uh, our desired communications. Well, that's fine. So like this transmitter puts out 100 watts. Well, if I'm talking to you just down the street here, I don't need 100 watts. I can turn it down to 5 watts or something. The more power you use, the signal kind of stretches out a little wider, a little wider. So people on adjacent frequencies, you interfere with them. Now, let me just talk about a handheld. Handhelds, the most power these puppies put out is 5 watts. 5. Well, so if we have a, a situation where we're going to be using this for the whole day, doing something like a marathon, and I'm going to be transmitting a lot, how long is that battery going to last? Hmm, eventually that battery's going to die. I have to put another battery in. Let's say that you're just down the road here, and I can turn this down to one watt, and we can still communicate. Oh, one watt? That battery will last five times longer. Okay? So, yeah, it's nice not to use a lot of power, but especially when you're using a handheld. When you're using a handheld, the less power you need to use, that's what you ought to set the handheld at. About how far could 5 watts, like, transmit? Okay. The problem is, we haven't got to the piece of the, to, we haven't got to the part here yet, what, what, what I will tell you will make sense. It's going to depend on the frequencies that you use. It's going to depend on the terrain. So if I tell you that I was down at Redondo Beach, and you were up at El Segundo Beach, Basically, that's almost line of sight. We could talk with five watts. But if I'm on one side of Palos Verdes and you're on the other side, technically two miles away, that mountain is going to prevent us from talking with five watts. You see, it's a, that's a frequency issue. Now, once you go on some of the other frequencies that, that I can use, five watts with certain other conditions, I could talk anywhere in this country. It's the incentive of the other license, the general class license. We'll get to that. We get to the propagation section. You're going to see all about that. Okay? Propagation section. Oh, you live. Section five, frequency. Anyway, the answer to your question, look at my chart here. Right here on section 10, we get there. It's all about propagation. Okay? And that's when you're going to find out a lot about the answer to what you just want. But okay, the next section is a bunch of memorizing stuff. Tech frequencies, technician class frequencies. What frequencies are you allowed to use? Well, this gets to be a memorizing thing. And so maybe it's not clear that you don't want to memorize more. So the problem now is that some of the questions in this that relate to this. There'll be things in the question that you want to understand. Forget the answer. There'll, there's terminology in the questions that won't make sense to you. So for about the next seven or eight charts, 